description, but uh, get a good description and let people know and see if you can get it back. <laughs> Anybody who experiences anything that you would think of as illegal has the right to talk to the cops. We don't stop them from doing that. I say, you know, you have the right to talk to the sheriff about this. If you want to, it's crime. You want to report the crime? If you do, we will help you do that. If you don't, we'd like you to sign this waiver that says, I was given my legal options and decided not to call. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people later will go, oh, you guys told me not to call. <laughs> <laughs> we remember it all different. Uh, just initial here. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in anything, we need a, we need a victim. We need someone that's willing to take that step um, to to pursue something. Because sometimes people think we're in the fair. It's not the same world, but it is. It's land town. Uh, stealing goods is stealing goods. How do you get, what about in a situation where you would like catch? A person is it just an automatic call for a backup person? Or well, is there any <coughs> it's a judgment call. Okay. If, you know, in, in one extreme, a person, uh, oh, this is a mistake, or I screwed up, or mm -hmm. I threw it, I forgot to pay, let me return it right now. If the if the person who's good to this gets the goods back and they say they're good with this, that need me for reaction, then you're not calling anybody. If it's not that easy, then you're thinking about getting back up, getting a bomb, getting a security uh, support team that will come over and deal with it. Don't make it bigger than it has to be. I'm always starting off with maybe we, maybe it's a misunderstanding, maybe we can just cooperate and get along. Help people calm down. The person stolen from is often pissed off but the DNA stolen from. You don't blame you for that. Take a breath, slow down. You got this person, you got the resources, we'll deal with it. If you catch up to someone who they say, oh, that person stole from me and stuff from his hat, those are tricky and sensitive and difficult. And we will approach. There he is. Can't stop people from accusing you. What we want to do is check it out, make sure everything's cool, and get you off the hook. You know, help us do that. If they won't do that, if they'll stick around, we're getting back up to them. At a certain point, you say, I'm not going to be able to resolve this real easy. And then you're thinking, get on the radio. <laughs> Other people will do that quickly, call like that. But everything's alleged. There's no perpetrators, there's no victims, it's just alleged. Uh, if, I, if I was on the radio and you said, I'm here with an alleged perpetrator, I don't know if it's a good thing or not. I'll be down the we're not accusing, judging, or laying anything on. We're just saying, here's what we're hearing, so here's why we're out. Um, I would like to say that I understand everything you talked about today in my mind, but already I tried to practice it and I, and I went to my old spot. It's like the fire to you've so, got to practice. Uh, I did it from down to here, and you can take a practice at home. Absolutely. Try and get comfortable with them. Good. And, them and imagine yourself. You have past from memory and you have future from imagination. Run yourself through using subjectivity. Run yourself through grabbing someone. Like, sure. Reflecting. So you get used to your mind learns those math and then you're more likely to do it in real life. What I try and do, and I, I react just like everybody, but what I try and do is I've tried to make my conditioned response to be a deep breath when I feel that first trigger. I've and seen him do it. I call it a one breath med meditation where I buy myself 15 seconds to make the next choice before I make that reaction. You know, my kid, my wife, any of that. And then face the situation and by learning to do that I've, I've, I've avoided a bunch that normally I would just step right into as a conditioned response. He says look what you did now you got me grounding myself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's essential. Or not yet. The video crew is taking this and they're archiving and they have a couple of rounds of them.
trying to get it into one presentation and then it would be available on the website. That's the goal, but we're not there yet. Okay. One more, John. Um, back to the cap thing, because you were, it sounded like your answer was more around cap rates and things happening in the food. Um, that's some caps have been a much bigger deal over the last few years. Anything different you would say about that? Zach and I got called to one a, a couple years ago where we ended up responding to two security people roughing up someone for uh, accused theft. Beating up the perpetrator. Right. <laughs> and it, it was tricky. It ended up with the person that was, the person had been in the campsite and had been stealing stuff and he was booted that night. But, um, Still, our immediate reaction would be, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. <laughs> Stop punching. <laughs> Especially in a country that's so loaded with stuff. Everybody gets to kill somebody because of their stuff. And yes. stuff. I don't know, does that help, John? Or? Yeah, it's, it's, more, it's more kind of a matter of, you see somebody wandering from camp, they don't look there, what's, what's kind of the right protocol? You don't control the camp like they control the camp. Well, I, I, said, er, I said earlier the first step is to be vigilant, be watching out, watch for people that don't, don't belong in, in camp. And if you see someone, help them find their way to where they need to be. And and sometimes they're yourself. just lost. Find out who they're with. And if they're with somebody that's in the camp, say so you can't be back here except with them. So we'll just wait over here and we'll get you plugged back in. But it's kind of that neighborhood watch situation where we're all taking, being willing to step up and, and say that if something isn't right, you know? Joe's got something. Yeah. I'm thinking that maybe it'd be good for people to practice mentally in their own mind. What are the options? What kind of options can I offer someone? Sure. Because I think the options, you can do this, this, or this. Usually you have some leeway. You say, here's how this one goes, here's how this one goes. Even in the worst situations, we're telling people, you have the choice, you can leave. <laughs> With or without the sheriff. With or without the sheriff, you know? <laughs> Trespassing from the fair and, and being kicked off might ruin your weekend, but getting arrested is going to really? have <laughs> We only arrest people for trespass 99% of the time. Anybody can bring a can bring a charge if they want to talk to the cops and file a report. The cops can charge somebody with something. Unusual here, but it happened. But we only arrest for trespass, which means if worse came to worse, we ask someone to leave the property. If they won't leave, then they're trespassing. So that when you go through your protocol and you have one of us come out, we have the power to say. You're going to get arrested if you don't go. Call the green taxi. Yeah. <laughs> well, last thing. Yeah, I got a question. So I had a weird scenario happened a couple years ago, and it was with somebody that was fair family. Um, and so it was just before legal, marijuana was legal, and there was this big talk of please make sure that nobody's smoking in public. Right. So I was out doing a shift over at Community Village, and I came out to the smoking area, and I saw this guy smoking some weed. Somebody else pointed out, hey, there's a guy that's smoking some weed. So I went up to him and I said, hey man, I'm really sorry, but like, you can't smoke weed like out here in public because you're in public. Right. And it's really bad if people take pictures of it or anything else and see that. We can actually lose us all doing this. This is us, we're family, we're my brother. I don't, want, I don't want to do this. And the guy had a major attitude, like major conflicting to me. And I really, I, I decompressed the situation three different times and got to the point where I found out what the guy's name was and what crew was. And he was adamant that he was fucking not going to go anywhere else to smoke. He had every fucking right to be there to smoke. Really? Absolutely. And I was like, okay. And after he left, three other people standing around was like, I cannot believe how controlled you were. That was insane and incredible. And what I felt my duty was then was to go to my council member and info booth and turn the guy's name and number in and said, I know who this guy's with. There's his name. He's on this crew. Absolutely. But it's a really hard, I guess, scenario to break down. And I don't know if you have any, any other side notes on that when you're dealing with it's not necessarily an outside person. Now you're dealing with somebody who's family who's here, and you're trying to defuse the situation. It's even more to the point. It's more dangerous for us to let family do that than to let the public do it. The cops and feds, whatever, didn't want to catch the public. They want to catch the family so that that would be us condoning it. But that's not so much true anymore. Now that it's legal in Oregon, we're, we're pretty much in a position of just put it away, sure. private hours, private places, yeah. and follow, leave it at that. Following up with a crew name is, is exactly right. I, I like to remind people that we collectively are all the gatekeepers 
for uh, who we let hang out with us all weekend, whether it's your SO or whether it's a crew member or a booth member or whatever. You want to go through some vetting <laughs> to make sure that this is someone that belongs here. And uh, yeah, we deal with a fair amount of um, fair amount of people that are in the family that are that that don't raise. <laughs> don't don't kind of make the cut, but um, so making that call the way you did is fine. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Or going to somebody who's on duty is also fine and saying I'm I don't want to do this, but I'm seeing it. Or if but if it starts to escalate, then I'd want you to back up. For sure. Go yeah. peace. We'll get back to you. Okay. And, 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 get and get that that also goes back to going to the the village info booth, dialing zero. I have someone smoking pot in the smoking area right down at my booth number, whatever. Try to and they'll get Pathrobe on it quick. That's their job. They'll get people dispatched to it. So use the system that's there. Yeah. All right. Thank you all very much. Have a great fair. Harold in the summer of love. Find it use it. If you missed the sign-up sheet or handouts, come on up and grab them. Anybody interested in the book, the book's right here. Anybody's wrapped? <laughs> no. Why are you here? I'm gonna work